Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we'll learn how to use EFK Suite in Kubernetes cluster in order to read the application logs. EFK stands for Elasticsearch, FluentD, and Kibana, which are the three components that's, that needs to be installed inside the cluster to read the application logs. So first of all, FluentD will be installed in each of our nodes to collect the logs created by the different uh, uh, pods. Then FluentD will send those logs into Elasticsearch cluster. Those logs then will be saved inside a database. And later Kibana, which will provide the dashboard for viewing those logs, will query Elasticsearch to get the different logs and then get those logs and uh, produce a nice dashboard with nice user interfaces and uh, uh, nice graphics for our developers to be able to read those logs and uh, understand how the application behaves actually to be able to fix uh, bugs and see how uh, if we have some other uh, anomalies inside the application. So let's get started. So let's learn how EFK suite works in Kubernetes. So in a typical Kubernetes cluster, we would have multiple uh, nodes. So here we'll talk about the case for uh, Kubernetes where we have uh, multiple nodes running inside our cluster. Let's say here I have a node number one and they have a node number two. And let's say node number three, for example. I have, I might have some other nodes uh, running in my cluster. Those nodes are what represent the Kubernetes uh, cluster. Those nodes could be either Windows, Linux nodes, and so on. And if I want, if I install my application inside the cluster, then the app will be inside a container. That container will be also inside a pod. And here I might have my pods uh, running. So let's say here I have my pod. In the second node also I might have some other uh, pods running my application. Let's say maybe I have three pods. And the same will be applied for the third node. I might have some pods running in this node. Let's see here add two pods. Those pods will produce logs and the logs will be stored in the node so that even after I lose my pod, the logs will still there. So each node have a specific directory or a specific folder in which it stores the uh, logs coming from the different pods. So that's the storage space inside each node for specific for storing the different logs. Each node will have its logs folder. And the uh, different pods will write when they produce their log, they will save those logs inside that folder. So each log will produce its own logs and will be saved inside that folder. So at this stage, all the logs are inside those uh, folders. We can query those uh, logs using the kubectl CLI tool for Kubernetes, using kubectl logs, then the name of the pod, and that tool will query to those uh, uh, folders and will get the uh, logs specific to that pod. So we can see those logs inside the um, command line. But this is not the best uh, experience to have for our developers. It would be really better if you can get a nice web app with a nice user interface, nice graphics and so on where we can query the logs coming from this pod for example or all the logs coming from uh, the node. That would be better for our developers, easy to use, easy to um, to understand and also uh, easy to be uh, used 
to fix the uh, the problems or the errors or the bugs that might uh, occur inside the application. So here we need another tool other than the kubectl logs command line in order to read those logs and view them in a we nice web app. And here where the EFK suite comes into play. So it's uh, three components, Elasticsearch, FluentD, and Kibana. Let's start by the first component, which is FluentD, which is responsible for collecting the logs from the different nodes. So FluentD should collect those logs from the different nodes, so it should be present and installed in each of those nodes to get access to that logs folder. For that, we can install it in Kubernetes using the uh, daemon set, which, which will, uh, so using daemon set, it will install the pod in all the different uh, uh, nodes. So let's imagine that here now we have uh, FluentD present in all the nodes. FluentD will be responsible for collecting the logs from that logs folder. So in each node we have an instance running of FluentD. Great, so now that FluentD have those different logs, it will save or it will send those logs into the second component in our uh, suite, which is Elasticsearch. And here, where we represent Elasticsearch in our uh, suite. And Elasticsearch is actually is uh, it's a complete uh, cluster in itself. So here, let's say Elasticsearch cluster. It's the cluster because it's different components that works together. In Elasticsearch cluster, we have different components. First of all is the uh, client component. Which actually will get the logs from the different uh, FluentD uh, containers. So FluentD will send its logs to this client uh, component. All FluentD will connect to that client uh, component to send their logs there. Then um, Elasticsearch will save those logs into a database. So for that, actually, it should first of all maintain the uh, cluster itself. That's by using some other uh, components, internal components like the uh, the master here. So we might have different master uh, instances, let's say a master per, per node, and those masters will command the uh, third component in Elasticsearch, which is the data component. The data component is the one that is responsible for storing the data or storing the logs into a database. The database here, if we use a managed Kubernetes cluster, it could be a managed disk available through using the persistent uh, volume and persistent volume claims. So the data, uh, the data pod will connect into a persistent volume or a persistent uh, uh, disk. This is our PV. And into that PV, it could, we could have our database where we'll save all the logs. So the logs 
will leave or will be saved right here so now we have the logs available in Elasticsearch cluster now we need the third component responsible for visualizing or for querying and visualizing those logs into a nice user interface that component is Kibana so here we'll add the third, our third component, Kibana. And Kibana here is simply a pod running in Kubernetes. If you want to install that into uh, Kubernetes, it could be a single pod. That's uh, enough, actually. And uh, this pod, its role is to uh, query the uh, Elasticsearch uh, client uh, component so it will send a query here asking for certain logs and in response it will get the different a collection uh, it will get a collection of logs then it will um, uh, provide a nice user interface to be able to visualize those data so it's Kibana and its data visualization tool. So from here we get access to a nice user interface, a web app, where we can see the uh, some statistics about the different logs, the number of times they appear, and so on. And we'll get the uh, collection of the different logs with the data about the uh, uh, stack trace and so on. So those are the different components that creates the uh, ELK or the EFK suite. But as we have actually EFK, we have another suite called ELK. Sometimes we talk about that uh, uh, so much. What is the difference between those uh, two uh, tools? Is that first one uses um, uh, Fluent D for data uh, for logs to collect the logs, and the second one replaces F with L. That's for log stash. So Fluent D is not the only tool for collecting the logs there is flu uh, log stash and we have also fluent bit which is fluent d but uh, a very lightweight uh, client uh, that could replace uh, fluent d to collect uh, uh, the logs fluent d is a cncf uh, graduated uh, uh, project so it's really recommended to uh, is the one recommended by cncf to be used uh, specifically in a kubernetes cluster the same also applies for kibana so as we have kibana for data visualization we could also use uh, uh, grafana which is well known for collecting or for visualizing metrics but it could be also used for uh, viewing the logs and that project for logs is actually called Grafana Grafana Loki Grafana Loki could actually uh, replace all the EFK suite because it have its own uh, client for collecting uh, the logs and pushing them into uh, a database Another important note here is that uh, Elasticsearch uh, cluster, because it's hard to maintain to make sure it scales uh, well and uh, it saves the data as it should do. Um, there is some cloud offerings that uh, provides Elasticsearch cluster as a managed service in the cloud, like uh, Azure Elasticsearch service, for example, or Elasticsearch 
cloud elastic cloud which is the offering provided by elastic the company that created elastic search so at the end i hope you have liked this video don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get more videos about anything devops kubernetes and uh, containers and don't forget to follow me on twitter my twitter handler is Hussam delay so thank you and wait for me for the next video bye bye